You're watching News 3 HD at noon. Linda Barch from the Bruce Company is here taking your calls at 270-9933. Boy, you got a forest here today. <laughs> well, we do have some nursery stock left. It's all on sale, though. Shrubs and trees are 50% off. I also wanted to bring a few things just to show you the gorgeous fall color on a few plants. This, this is called a sweet spire that is beautiful purple and has an interior of yellow leaves. Oh, yeah. That and is very pretty. It really is, isn't it? And the other barberry over there that has wonderful oranges and yellows. During the summer, it's, a, it's called sensation, so it's yellowish. But at this time of the year, we get a great fall color. And then there's some great grasses that are turning their fall color, like that Shenandoah panicum that has purplish tinges to the top. And these are all perennials? They are perennials, yes. And you can plant them now? You certainly can plant them now. This is a great time. Cooler weather. Okay. This one, if you have this in your garden, it's northern sea oats, and this is a great time of year to cut those panicles back and bring them in as a dry arrangement, because otherwise they tend to seed in your garden. You so. know, yeah, it'd be all over the place. It's there you want it. All right, let's get to the phones. We will start with Julia in Middleton. Hi, Julia. Hi. What's your question? My question is, is it necessary to cover your mums when there's warning of frost? Did you hear no, I didn't. I'm okay, sorry. do you have to cover the mums if there's a warning of frost? No, the mums are meant to survive. The, it's just they're just like pansies. They will take the cold, so you don't have to worry about covering them. Only if you've had them inside of a warm home and then move them out. But if they they've been outside, you know, if you purchase them from the previous company, you don't have to cover those. That's, That's fall, fall color. Fall colors. Yes. Mums. All right, let's go to Sharon in Cambridge. Hi, Sharon. Hi. Hi. What's your question? <laughs> I have some stargazer lily bulbs and other oriental lily bulbs that I didn't get planted in the spring. Okay. Um, can I still plant those? If they're still in good shape, I don't think that they'd survive another winter. I, I worry about those either rotting or developing something called dry rot. So squeeze them, and if they if they are powdery, then don't bother. But otherwise, but if yes, healthy, you can get them in the ground. Get them in the ground. Mm -hmm. All right. Rosemary in Madison. Hi, what's your question? Hi. I'd like to know as of... Um, Perennials have to be fertilized now. Okay. And if I could still divide um, or split perennials now or vistulate. Okay. No, you can certainly do that. This is this is a, another time of year. I usually like spring better, but this is early enough that you're probably going to be able to get them divided. If we turn cold very quickly, what I would suggest is go out and, and make sure that they don't get heaved out. If we get freezing and thawing, mm -hmm. make sure you, you firm them back in. Water things well because we're getting dry now. You're going to find that when you're digging, you may want to water an area first. And as far as fertilizing, I always like to fertilize. Um, if you're planting bulbs for spring bloom, make sure that you're doing fertilizing with them. And with, just regular fertilizer or bone meal? Or? Bone meal is real good. We're, we're, higher phosphorus is a real good product because then you're going to prom be promoting um, flowering next spring. But a, a complete fertilizer is all right also. Okay. Uh, Jeannie in Baraboo. Hi, what's your question? Um, I have a trumpet vine, and it has never bloomed. Uh-huh. And I want to know what I need to do with it. Do I cut it down now in the spring? Okay, don't cut it back. The problem with trumpet vine is that they are so vigorous. They get really carried away, and people prune them back because they're, they're growing further than what they want. And then you are cutting off the flowers if you prune it at this time of the year. So don't prune it back. Give it some decent support. Tie it in place. And it does take several years, and it has to have full sun. But otherwise, it, it will eventually flower. Yeah, they're beautiful. They are, and they're very vigorous. Once you have one... They don't go away. Okay. <laughs> Julia in Stoughton. Hi, Julia. What's your question? Hi. I'd like to know if it's too late to prune back a bleeding heart. It's kind of getting away. Really? See, my bleeding hearts are totally gone. They've already died back, and I, I picked um, them off. They're, they're cut down to the ground. I can only, I just remember where they're planted. So if yours is still green, you could cut it back. I see a lot of people starting to clean up their gardens, cutting things back. So it wouldn't hurt to cut the foliage off and get in your compost. So this, this is a good time. Yes, it is. All right. Kathy and Adams. Hi, Kathy. What's your question? Um, I have about a, a yucca plant that's uh -huh. about three and a half foot across. Oh. <laughs> that's a big one. Yeah. I was wondering if I can divide that and how many pieces I could divide it into. Okay, well, the yucca is going to have, you know, big sections at the top that's going to indicate the center of each plant. Um, I'm not sure. I guess you could do it at this time of the year. Uh, uh, you might interfere with the flowering for next year is the only thing that I have concerned. That's a big plant. <laughs> She's got to have 
five or ten in there. Mm -hmm. So you probably could take off some of the smaller ones around the outer edges and leave the, the main ones intact, and then you'd still get your flowers. All Perhaps right. that would work. And cover things up you want to save for tonight. If you still have impatience out there or tomatoes or things, yes, cover them up. All right, we're out of time for now. Stay on the line. Linda will take your call off the air. We'll see you next week.